Across the majority of popular music, only a small selection of time signatures are ever used, most commonly 4-4, although you will also see 3-4, 6-8 and 12-8 often used. But there are so many more options out there than these typical choices of metre. So today we're going to look at some songs that use one of my favourite time signatures, 7-4. If a piece of music is in 7-4 time, then it has 7 quarter note beats in each bar. One of the most famous examples of a song in 7-4 is Salisbury Hill by Peter Gabriel. Now, unlike the more common signatures like 4-4, 4, 3-4, 6-8, 4, 4, 6, 7-4 is an example of an odd or complex time signature. Put simply, an odd time signature is any meter where the number of beats, the top number, won't divide down into groups of two or three. So other examples of odd time signatures include 5-4, 13-8 and 11-8. Now the reason we refer to these time signatures as odd time signatures isn't just because they have an odd number on the top. For example, 3-4 isn't an example of an odd signature, even though it has an odd number on the top. The oddness of these signatures is more down to the way that they sound. At least in Western music, we write most of our music in signatures that divide down into groups of two or three. So this includes signatures like 4-4, 3-4, 6-8, 12-8, 2-4. Typically, audiences seem to find signatures like this to have a more natural pulse to them. So signatures that don't divide down into two or three are deemed odd signatures. Now the reason why these signatures might sound odd and these signatures might sound normal is a question for another day, although I have explored this topic a bit before in my Why is 4-4 so common video, so go check that out if you're interested. But let's get back to looking at 7-4. Now the interesting thing about 7-4 is that usually when a song is in 7-4 time, it will group the beats of the bar into a group of four and a group of three, which can actually make 7-4 sound a little less odd. For example, in the intro to Salisbury Hill, the rhythm groups into a group of three and a group of four. After the intro of Salisbury Hill, this pattern actually swaps and we now instead get a group of four and then a group of three. In fact, to make this grouping clearer, Songs in 7-4 are sometimes transcribed as bars of alternating 3-4 and 4-4 like this. This of course doesn't change how the music sounds, but it might make it easier for the musician to conceptualise the rhythm. Of course, an obvious drawback of writing it like this is that the page is suddenly a lot messier and the musician now has to keep track of when the signature is changing. Despite this grouping of 4 beats and 3 beats, Songs in 7-4 still undeniably have an odd feel to them, an off-kilter energy, which is part of the rhythmic charm and character of the song. So that you can hear the impact that the 7-4 meter is having on Salisbury Hill, this is what Salisbury Hill would sound like if it was instead in 4-4 time. It still works of course, but it certainly loses a lot of character and a lot of rhythmic momentum. Interestingly, at the end of the A section to Salisbury Hill, the music briefly switches to 4-4 time. This gives this phrase here a very complete sound to it. As compared to the 7-4 time that the listener has now got used to, 4-4 has a very even, rhythmically complete sound to it. And I imagine Peter Gabriel wound up putting this extra beat in here 
because the end of the phrase just wouldn't sound rhythmically complete if it's stuck in 7-4. A name almost synonymous with odd time signatures is Dave Brubeck. Brubeck's unsquare dance is another classic example of 7-4 time. Once again, if I put unsquare dance into 4-4 time, you can hear how it loses its curious unsquare groove. Now, since the beginning of this video, I'm sure most of you have been shouting at your screens money! And yes, Pink Floyd's Money from Dark Side of the Moon is a brilliant example of 7-4 Although, Money isn't 100% in 7-4 not only does the guitar solo section switch to a rocking 12-8 time, but also this section of the verse is actually in 4-4 with a one-off bar of 2-4. This metric change is actually quite easy to miss, as this stretch of 14 beats could fit into 7-4 time. But listening to the rhythmic accents of the section, you can hear that the passage is not in 7-4. But beyond these moments when the time signature changes, there is actually something else going on here. Money is a 7-4 shuffle. A shuffle is when rather than each beat of the bar being divided into two eighth notes, Instead, each beat divides into three eighth notes. Here is Money's bass line in its usual shuffled rhythm. And here's what it would sound like if the rhythm was played straight, i.e. not shuffled. If we wanted to notate a shuffle in 4-4 time, one solution is to put triplets on every quarter note. However, if the whole piece of music is shuffled, it can make more sense to just write it down in 12-8 time, because 12-8 is just like 4-4, however, whereas in 4-4 each strong beat divides down into two eighth notes, in 12-8 each strong beat divides into three eighth notes, accommodating our shuffle. So that's how we write down a shuffle in 4-4 time, but how do we write down Money's 7-4 shuffle? If we follow the same logic of a 4-4 shuffle being written down in 12-8 time, then a 7-4 shuffle would be written down in 21-8 time. And yes, as unusual as 21-8 time sounds, it would be an accurate way of transcribing money. But let's remember that the purpose of a time signature is to make the music easier to read and easier to understand. And because the sight of 21-8 would probably give most performers IBS, money is usually transcribed in 7-4 time, and then we use triplets to show where we want three eighth notes in a beat instead of just two. Another song which features a 7-4 shuffle is All You Need Is Love. Now, I actually discussed All You Need Is Love before in my 3-4 trick video, and in that video I described it as 4-4 with occasional bars of 3-4. And I do believe that this is the most performer-friendly way to transcribe the music, and it's also probably the way that the Beatles themselves thought about the timing. However, you can also understand All You Need Is Love as being largely in 7-4 time, at least in the intro and the verse. 
Now, like I mentioned, All You Need Is Love is also shuffled, so this can add even more confusion to the way you transcribe the song. Often, whether the music is transcribed in 7-4 or alternating bars of 4-4 and 3-4, this shuffle is notated in triplets, much like it is in Money. However, some sheet music for All You Need Is Love instead writes down the rhythm as alternating bars of 12-8 and 9-8 in an attempt to accommodate the shuffled rhythm. This is effectively the 21-8 signature I was talking about before, but they have made it slightly more accessible by dividing the beats into groups of 12 and 9. So which time signature is All You Need Is Love in? Well, really, all of these answers are valid. A song doesn't have to be understood in only one signature. A signature, after all, is just a way of writing something down, and sometimes you can write the same thing down in different ways. The main guitar riff from Times Like These by the Foo Fighters is in 7-4 time. It seems like the Foo Fighters have actually really tried to bring out the unevenness of 7-4. For example, the song actually begins in 4-4 time. This sets up our expectations for the song to continue in 4-4, making it all the more jilting when the guitar riff kicks in in 7-4. Throughout times like these, we continue to get shifts to 4-4 before returning back to 7-4, each time once again drawing attention to the unevenness of 7-4. Very fitting for a song called Times Like These. The last example that we'll look at today is a song that really brings out the oddness of 7-4's odd time. 2 plus 2 equals 5 by Radiohead. Unlike most of the examples we've looked at so far, Instead of playing a rhythm that naturally divides the seven beats into a group of three and a group of four, two plus two equals five divides the bar right down the middle, effectively creating a seven against two polyrhythm. This division of the 7-4 bar into two equal halves gives the song's rhythm an uncanny pulse that simultaneously sounds odd and even at the same time. And this fits perfectly with the song's title. 2 plus 2 equals 5 is an expression lifted from George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984. This song is about a world that isn't quite right, where things don't quite add up. So this unusual odd and even rhythm creates an appropriately uneasy backdrop for a song about when 2 plus 2 equals 5. As I mentioned earlier, most popular music won't use odd meters like 7-4, instead sticking to simple meters like 4-4 and 3-4. And perhaps audiences do have a preference for these simple meters, but this doesn't mean that audiences can't also enjoy odd meters. The songs we've looked at today, Salisbury Hill, Money, All You Need Is Love, these songs are massively popular and they use odd time signatures, which is a testament to the fact that audiences can and do enjoy non-standard time signatures. I think the main reason that odd meters are so rare in our pop music is because of a lack of exposure. Songwriters and composers will write music similar to the music that they're exposed to. So if they're not exposed to music that uses odd meters, then they're not going to write music in odd meters. It effectively creates a vicious cycle where they stick to simple meters because it's the only thing they know. And this isn't some new problem. Almost 60 years ago now, Dave Brubeck was already discussing this problem. The idea was the jazz used to challenge the public and make them think in terms more advanced rhythmically than they were used to thinking in. Mm -hmm. In the 20s, uh, it was hard to get a, a, a group of people to, to clap on yeah. two and four. One, two, three, four. This was difficult. 30 years is long enough to be stuck there. Uh, it's time that uh, the jazz musicians uh, take up their original role of leading the public into uh, more adventurous rhythms. 
And you think this is what is now going to take place? Well, uh, take five is proof of it. Mm -hmm. After all, the the uh, the kids are tired of rock and roll too, mm -hmm. and yet they can dance in five four time. Ultimately, odd time signatures don't have to be considered odd. They're not something reserved to jazz and prog rock. If you look beyond Western music, odd meters can sometimes be just as common as four four or three four. All we need is more writers like Brubeck, Peter Gabriel or Pink Floyd to bring these interesting and underutilised time signatures into the mainstream. Now recently I've been involved in a collaborative project with nine other music theory YouTubers including Adam Neely, David Bruce, Twelve Tone and 8-Bit Music Theory. And for that project I was tasked with rearranging Frere Jacques into 7-4 time. If you're interested to know why I was rearranging a children's nursery rhyme into an odd time signature, then do check out the main video on Adam Neely's channel, which is all about this project. I've linked it down below. And as always, thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon, including the names you can see on screen now, and Abigail Allen, Andre Science Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andy Deacon, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivella, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, David Lee Fish, Dr. Darren Wicks, Eleanor Skorchenko, S. Ben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, Eyes, F. D. Hodor, Gil Lamolatona, James Kao, J. A. Cockensparger, Joe Watson, Jonas Soderstrom, Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Mark Height, Melody Composer Squared, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Paul Muller, Paul Pazel, Peter Dumphy, Piot Shmulovsky, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Steve Daly, Sean Kennedy, Tim Beaker, Tim Payne, Toot, Vidad Flowers, and Vladimir Kodakov.